In this game, Karl Schlechter, playing white pieces, uh, demonstrated how to play against the Dutch defense, the Stonewall variation. And uh, more generally, this game uh, can be a good example of how to play against the opponent's weakened squares, how to occupy them with pieces, and how to exploit these uh, weaknesses. So, uh, Schlechter started with d4, d d5, c4, e6. At first sight, it's uh, queen's gambit. However, after f5, f5 it turned out to be... Uh, Dutch defense, so c6, it's stonewall variation. The idea of this um, opening is to take uh, full control over e4 square. The knight from f6 uh, comes to e4, then black castles, king side, the rook uh, from f file exerts pressure, uh, queen uh, from e8 comes to uh, h5, Knight from b8 uh, usually comes to f6 and then usually jumps to g4. And um, then white, if white takes uh, the knight on e4, black usually capture back uh, with f uh, pawn. So the pawn on uh, e4 becomes very strong, exerts pressure on a white position and f file opens after that. So. Uh, white, uh, ha uh, black has uh, the attack on uh, king side. However, this opening also has serious uh, drawbacks. Uh, first of all, the light square bishop on c8 is uh, very bad in this opening. As you see, it uh, is limited by its own uh, pawns, as most uh, black pawns are on white squares. And besides that, uh, black has seriously... Uh, weakened the dark squares, and as you see, e5, uh, d6, after after g5, as black usually played g, also g5, g4 in this uh, opening. After g5, uh, the f6 uh, square, h6 square is also weakened. Uh, so this opening is really tricky. So in this position, white played bishop f4. This is a, a logical move uh, to take control over uh, dark squares, especially the weakened uh, e5 square. And black played um, a, a little bit strange move here, bishop d6. Uh, this move isn't very good because it leads to the exchange of uh, dark square bishops, which, of course, is in white's favor, as... Uh, this uh, dark square black bishop is one of the most important defenders of dark squares. And after the exchange, the weakness of dark uh, squares would become uh, even more important. However, Schlechter doesn't hurry to exchange the bishops. He plays e3. At first sight, this move is bad because uh, it gives black the opportunity to exchange on f4 and double white um, uh, pawns, uh, damaging the pawn structure. Uh, however, this uh, bishop takes f4 move isn't a good move. If black played bishop f4 after ef, although white has uh, doubled pawns, it's not very important. What is more important is what white gains uh, after this exchange. And white um, opens with this exchange the very important e-file. Uh, and uh, all black weaknesses uh, are on this e-file. So e backward e6 pawn, the weak uh, e5 uh, square, and uh, white would uh, exert a tremendous pressure on the e file. That's why um, after e3, black didn't take on f4 and played knight f6. So Schlechter continues development, bishop d3, and now queen c7 attacking the f4 second time and threatening to take it twice and winning the pawn. That's why Schlechter uh, defends the bishop. Again, he doesn't take on uh, d6 but plays g3. Again, bishop f4 is bad for the same reason, uh, e takes f. That's why black uh, castles, castles, and knight e4. Now Schlechter makes a very good move, queen b3. 
this move has a thread, creates a thread. Uh, for example, let's say black makes some uh, irrelevant move like uh, h6. Uh, actually, it's not irrelevant. It's a good move, preparing g, g5, but uh, not in this position. So after h6, uh, white would have taken on d5. And now if black takes with c pawn, uh, white would have played a knight b5 with a fork and uh, taking on d6 with a knight uh, next uh, move. Uh, which would be very bad for black because uh, they uh, will lose their dark square bishop uh, while white will still have the dark square bishop and uh, the weakness of dark squares would become catastrophic. And if black takes uh, with e pawn, uh, then uh, white will just take twice on e4 as the queen b3 uh, move created x-ray, very unpleasant x-ray, and black cannot take twice on e4. So knight e4, fe, bishop e4, and uh, now d-pawn cannot take as it is pinned. That's why after queen b3, in order to uh, move away from this very unpleasant uh, x-ray, black played king h8. Now, uh, the next move is very strong, positional move, uh, that almost forces black to take on f4, which will lead to a position favorable for white. So I offer you to pause the video and try to find this move. So the move is rook c1, now creating another very unpleasant x-ray. And uh, again, the threat is uh, c takes d. And now, uh, after cd, no matter what pawn takes on uh, d5, uh, white will play knight uh, b5. Even if black takes with uh, e pawn, uh, knight will still go jump to b5 as c pawn cannot take it back, take it because of the x-ray. Uh, and after knight b5, next move, um, white would take on d6 with a knight. That's why uh, black is almost forced to take uh, the, on f4 in order to prevent these threats. However, as I already said, this leads to a big positional advantage for white, as the e-file is open now. Uh, Queen f7, knight e5, very beautiful centralized knight. Uh, queen e7. So, uh, however, white still has uh, some problems. Uh, one of them is doubled pawns, and another one is a very strong centralized uh, knight of black. Except this knight on e4, all other black pieces are very bad. So with the next uh, like two, uh, two or three moves, uh, white solves all these problems and gets almost uh, ideal uh, position, undoubling the pawns and getting rid of the knight on e4, and absolutely opening the e-file for the rooks. So I offer you to pause the video again and try to find uh, this move and the plan that consists of just two, three moves. So this move is at first sight a little bit strange. Bishop takes e4. So white uh, gives away the exchanges, the light square bishop. However, uh, in turn, uh, white can get rid of the light square bishops. Uh, get rid of the doubled uh, pawns by playing f3. So now white is threatening to take on e4 twice, winning the pawn. That's why uh, black is forced to take on f3. And uh, as you see, uh, white uh, now don't uh, doesn't have uh, any doubled pawns. E file is open. And uh, white doesn't hurry to take the pawn on f3. White can take it at any moment. 
That's why Schlechter played uh, first uh, rook e1, uh, queen c7. And now another very strong uh, move, queen a3. So queen uh, now takes under control the weak dark squares with a tempo attacking uh, the rook. And also this move uh, doesn't let black to develop harmoniously. For example, the most natural move for black now would be knight d7. Uh, for example, black didn't play it, but let's say if black played knight d7, uh, developing the knight and protecting the rook, black would have played queen e7. And now uh, attacking the pawn, pinning the knight, the knight cannot move now, uh, and uh, the rook the queen cannot move if queen moves somewhere uh, white will just take twice on d7 winning uh, the, a piece and if black plays queen d7 then it will be followed by the fork and if rook takes then still uh, black loses the queen that's why queen a3 uh, was a very strong move and black uh, played uh, king g8 in order to defend the rook now uh, white took on f3 finally uh, again black cannot play uh, knight d7 for the above mentioned reason that's why white plays knight a6 developing the knight on not very good square now schlechter plays b3 uh, the queen already finished uh, its uh, job on the queen side and now is moving to the king side in order to take part in the attack uh, on the king side. Queen d8. Uh, this move is uh, threatening the, the, to take on d4 after the exchange on c4. That's why Schlechter plays c5, closing the center on the one hand and fixing the black pawns on uh, light squares, emphasizing uh, how bad the bishop, light square bishop is. Now knight c7, queen b2, bishop d7, queen c2. So now queen takes another very important diagonal and also attacks the h7 pawn which will become very important in few moves as you will see so queen e7 rook f1 rook e8 g4 so this is the expansion on the king side and also uh, g4 move opens way to the rook in order to join the attack of h7 pawn for the second attacking it second time so bishop c8 and rook h3. And now uh, black is forced to play a g6 move. And this is uh, very, this move creates terrible uh, weaknesses. Uh, so if before that uh, weaknesses, dark square weaknesses consisted of mainly d6 and e5, after g6 move, also f6 and h6, all important squares around the king are weakened. And, um, and white, uh, in future, after playing g5, uh, would put a knight on g4, and from g4 the knight would be able to jump either on f6 or uh, h6. Uh, however, um, before uh, playing uh, actively on the king side, Schlechter plays a little bit uh, strange looking move, b4. The idea of this move is to, uh, to prepare the breakthrough on the queen side. At first sight, it's strange because white is playing on the king side. Why to play on queen side? However, uh, Using the fact that black cannot do anything active and the position is static and all black can do is just sit and wait what white will do. Schlechter, before starting uh, activity on the king side, 
um, prepares uh, the breakthrough on the queen side. And then after it, he will, uh, depending on the situation, choose where to break through, either on the king side or on the queen side or on both of them, creating two weaknesses on the different sides. So that's a very good uh, strategy. So black again can just wait, queen f6, rook f3, rook e7, a4, uh, threatening perhaps b5, that's why black played a6. And now, uh, after making all, finishing all preparations on the queen side, Schlechter returns to the king side. So ideally, he would like to play g5. However, at the moment, it would be bad, because the g5 move weakens the f5 square. And after g5, black would have played queen f5. Uh, and... Uh, blockading this square and probably that would lead to the uh, exchange of queens uh, so white will uh, lose uh, most of uh, its most of his advantage that's why but on the other hand g5 move is very important because after g5 the dark square uh, weaknesses would be fixed and the knight from g4 will be able to jump there as i already said so what to do Schlechter finds, finds a great solution, a very elegant solution. Uh, before playing g5, he uh, takes under control the f5 square, so that after g5, queen cannot go to f5, with a very interesting manure. So I offer you to pause the video and find this manure. So this is a knight manure. Uh, Schlechter plays uh, knight d1. The idea is to put the knight on e3, from, from which uh, it will, of course, control f5. And after that, after once knight uh, comes to e3, the g5 will be played. So black, again, can only play some passive waiting moves, rook g7. Now knight e3. Uh, now black knows that uh, g5 is coming, that's why beforehand moves away the queen, queen e7. Now g5, as you see, now this knight will go to uh, g4 and jump either to h6 or to f6. Bishop d7, knight g4, bishop e8, knight h6, check. And from h6, it's very important that knight uh, still keeps under control the f -file, uh, f5 square, so that neither rook nor queen can go there. King h8. Now, uh, only two uh, white pieces, two knights, are occupying the dark, uh, weakened dark squares. However, there are much more dark squares, as you see. And Schlechter finds a way to penetrate with the third piece, namely his queen. He plays queen e2. The idea is to uh, put a knight to g4. Then to centralize the queen, queen will stand on e5, and knight will go to f6. And then three pieces, two knights and the queen will all already occupy uh, these weakened squares. So queen d8, knight g4, bishop d7, queen e5, very beautiful centralized queen, and there is nothing black can do to uh, force it away because neither uh, rook f5 is uh, possible because knight controls it, controls it uh, nor knight can attack the queen uh, nor the bishop. So knight e8, rook h3, queen c7. So black hopes that the exchange of queens will lead to some simplifications and uh, it will be relatively easier to defend. However, it's not the case. As you will see, knight f6, so black exchanges queens, f takes e. So the e file is closed now. Uh, however, instead of it, uh, the file that isn't less uh, important, the f file uh, opens where white also dominates. So rook e7, 
rook f3 so white exerts a terrible pressure on f file forcing uh, black to take on uh, to take on f6 uh, rook takes rook takes and now e takes e e takes f so on the one hand white now has uh, the protected passed pawn on the other hand the e file e5 square is uh, free again uh, and uh, knight will occupy it and uh, positionally um, strategically black's position is absolutely lost as this bishop is very weak uh, very bad it doesn't uh, it cannot move uh, it's uh, not even a bishop it's a big pawn the rook is also uh, very passive because uh, there are no open uh, files for, for it and the king cannot move uh, so uh, the rook is uh, under attack so rook e8 now of course a black uh, if it was black's move black could have played e5 uh, getting rid of the backward pawn and freeing the bishop and but of course schlechter doesn't let black do it he with tempo puts his knight on e5 so knight f7 check king g8 and knight e5 so the contrast between this beautiful uh, knight on e5 and terrible bishop on d7 is obvious uh, the bishop is now under attack f7 fork is threatening that's why rook d8 defending the bishop and now uh, the last uh, piece so knight is placed ideally rook is great but uh, in the end game king should also be centralized uh, that's why king g2 schlechter starts moving to f4 and uh, if he has opportunity in future king will come to e5 after knight uh, moves away so king f8 h4 there is no hurry for white because black cannot do anything anyway bishop e8 king f3 bishop f7 king f4 uh, king e8 and now mm, uh, after all white pieces are placed perfectly it's time to as there is already a uh, passed pawn on the king side it's time to start a breakthrough on the queen side b5 uh, first schlechter prepares this move by playing rook b1 and after king f8 b5 and in this position black resigned uh, because uh, it's the position is absolutely lost and there is nothing black can do white is going to create another weakness on c6 so let's say black plays a takes b a b now c6 is under attack and if uh, black defends it bishop e8 white will just take on c6 and after bishop c6 uh, white will uh, exchange the brilliant knight to the terrible bishop uh, in order to get absolutely winning a rook ending uh, so takes takes and now after the exchange the e5 square is free and king penetrates attacking the weakness one weakness is on e6 another weakness is on c6 so next move the rook will uh, come to b6 uh, attacking the weakness or b7 attacking h7 or from b7 will probably next come to c7 attacking this so it's impossible to protect all these weaknesses uh, that's why after after b5 move uh, black resigned uh, 